Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. I figured out how to use my tablet, email the video to myself, and to download it into my computer. When I opened up the email on the computer, but if I make a very long video, the download could take a while. Um, I do need to get with Kathy, I guess. She knows how to save it to OneDrive and then go to the computer and open it up in OneDrive. I don't know if it's a download from there. Anyway, long story short, this is a prophecy that was received by P Peter Kirstein. Kirstein, K-I-R-S-T-E-I-N, SWAT Ministries. Don't you love that? I got a link to his private Facebook you don't have to belong to Facebook. You just got to click on the link and you can read all his prophecies. I'm going to share with you the one he got on November the 7th. Okay? Because it talks about first fruits. And see if I tried to make a video with this. Yeah, I could have it showing my face. And it would be clearer and loud and everything. But this way it gets up sooner. And I have to lean in close anyway and so i'm not sure how i would record it and read this uh, so for this kind of video that i have to read i'm going to have to use my computer so just bear with me as i lean in to read this teeny tiny print it was received november 7th at 3 26 a.m by peter peter p-i-e-t-e-r i don't know if that's german anyway peter kirstein swap ministries Okay, God's, it's titled, God's Restored, Glorified Adam. The Father wants me to teach you about the man-child company of first fruits, which were so prophetically planned and ordained by him, to be unveiled and brought forth during the time of the harvest, which marks the end of an age, and which ushers in the kingdom age, which now unfolds in the day of the Lord. Wow. So, do you remember a couple weeks ago I did a little Bible teaching on the day of the Lord? It was included in there. And I said I, I was 99.99% .99 sure that the day of the Lord was not just one 24-hour day as we know it it could be the Lord could do anything he wants but this here tells me that it says and which ushers in the kingdom age which now unfolds in the day of the Lord you see the day of the Lord is this wrapping up of the church age is how I would like to put it Okay, let me continue. Matthew 13, 38. He's, he uh, intersperses scripture with this, what he receives. All right. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sorts, I'm sorry, sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age. And the reapers are the angels. This is scripture now. I don't know what version. Verse 40 in Matthew 13. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. 41. The Son of Man will send out his angels and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Oh my goodness. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I was going to do a Bible teaching on this parable to talk about the who are the wheat and the tares and how come the angels don't come and cast them into fire. And then, you know, the way it reads, this is why there are people who believe in a post-trib rapture. 
But people realize this. These people that become wheat, they get saved, born again, they accept Jesus as they should, and they refuse the mark of the beast to make it to the end of the, tribu the great tribulation or the wrath of God. The angels who come will take all the people who are marked and evil otherwise. I can't imagine there being any unsaved people that aren't marked. But the point is, they are thrown into the lake of fire. They don't even get to go to the judgment day. It's the way it sounds to me. It says they will and, and cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is why another reason I believe Matthew was written to the Jews. They will be marked to be protected. That's in the first part of Revelation chapter 7. Where 12,000 from the tribe of so-and-so, Reuben, uh, Judah, so on, so forth. They're marked to protect them. And then a multitude too large to number appears in heaven. That's all in Revelation chapter 7. The 144,000 that make up the bride of Christ are mentioned in Revelation 14.4. See, the book is written out, out of chronological order. The Lord told me that in a message years ago to help me understand it. Alright, so now he, he puts these scriptures down and he says... The harvest being gathered through the preaching of the gospel is given as God's greatest sign that the end is near. Also, the coming of the Lord, Matthew 24, 3 through 4 and 14. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. James 5, 7 Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandmen, waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth. Oh, that's us, brothers and sisters, those who are first fruits. Jesus is our husband already. That's See, I have that on a shirt. Isaiah 54. Thy maker is thine husband. Okay. Um, the husband man waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it. Until he received the early and latter rain. That's a number. Eight. Be ye also patient. Must be James 5 verse 8. I'm sorry I have to lean in so close. But some things are harder to see than others. But ye also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Okay. Joel 3.13 Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come, get you down, for the press is full. The fats overflow. That's what it says, the fats overflow. For their wickedness is great. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Verse 15 the sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw their shining. Yeah, he's, that's talking about the three days of darkness. Everything will be pitch black. And those who are left behind, you must stay in your home. Close all your windows and doors. You don't have to duct tape them shut. You, the main thing is so they can't see in and you can't see out. Because those who call upon the name of the Lord will have light. That's, people have gotten that in messages. So I believe it. If you pray, you're praying. 
instead of complaining and crying and being all pitiful, you say, all right, all right. We found ourselves, we're left behind. It's all right. It means we all have work to do. We us get on our knees and pray. And you repent. And you say, Lord, we need to repent, obviously. And each person in the family, if there's more than one, you repent, get people repenting for what they've been doing wrong. They know their heart. Y'all know what you do. Y'all know what you refuse to do. I'll leave it at that. All right. If you don't, just start asking, Lord, what did I do wrong? What did I not do right? What, what, what happened? Why am I not taken? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Did you reject the Holy Spirit? I hope not. All right. So we talked about that. Titus reveals that the harvest shall be gathered during the tribulation. Then comes the end. We are the Luke 17, Luke 21, and Matthew 24, final generation. He showed me this when the Father suddenly froze time before me. Through a prophetic, revelatory, seer encounter, God took me through 6,000 years of Bible prophecy in a wink of an eye. This man has got to be so close to God to get these revelations. Kathy was reading them last night, and it's like, wow, this, this guy, this is incredible. All right. He literally caused me to suddenly stand still before my very eyes, and he took me into eternity. Then the Lord God took me by his spirit through all the eyes of the old prophets and said the generation of which all the prophets of old spoke the generation of which my son spoke in Matthew 24 Luke 17 and Luke 21 you are living it see there are Jews who got born again some people call them completed Jews I call them messianic Jews so they could also be part of the first fruits. Do you get that? Okay. It's, he's saying to this uh, Peter, the Lord is saying, uh, you are living it. Matthew 24, Luke 17, and Luke 21. Then I saw a clear open vision of the prophet Elijah standing before me. And the God of glory hit me so hard that I broke down and wept. I saw Elijah because the man-child company of the first fruits shall operate in the similitude of Elijah. That means similarities. There will be similarities to Elijah. We are coming into a time of divine acceleration and things are going to start happening, start to happen faster. Did the Lord not say in Mark 13:20? And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he has chosen, he has shortened the days. We are now coming into the time of the final great outpouring of God's Spirit that shall bring in the final great harvest. The season that we are coming into was prophesied by a friend of Smith Wigglesworth in 1965. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the awakening hour. All right. Now in quotes, it says, When I visit my people in mighty revival power, it is to prepare them for the darkness ahead. With the glory shall come great darkness. For the glory is to prepare my people for the darkness. I will enable my people to go through the darkness because of the visitation of my spirit. We are the generation that must birth and bring forth his man-child. 
company of first fruit kingdom forerunners, which shall be the fulfillment of Romans 8, 19. For the earnest expectation of the creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. For the cre Verse 20. For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him, capital H, who subjected it in hope. Verse 21, because the creation itself also will be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. God's kingdom through governmental authority is worked out by the Spirit, that's a capital S, in the lives of this man-child. And by the way, look up Isaiah 66, verse 7, about the before she travailed, she gave birth. Before the tribulation, a child was born. Uh, before, the, before she labored, the child was born is what it means. Who has heard of such a thing? Before the baby was born, a baby was born? Read that. See if you don't get it. Before the church goes to heaven, the remnant of the church goes first. That's what it means. The remnant, the first fruits. All right. And then tribulation to completely refine those who aren't refined already. They haven't given up stuff. They haven't forgiven. They're not seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They don't want to be doing any of those weird things. They just want to love Jesus and get to heaven. See, you got a lot of people got it 80% right, 90% right, but you're lacking something. I'm not saying you, but people in the church in general, a lot of them are only 50% right. And they're believing in once saved, always saved. They don't repent because they believe that's adding to the works of the cross. Even though it's all throughout the New Testament that we have to repent because we're all sinners and fall short of the glory of God. Every day we, we put a stain on our garment. We, we have to be spotless. Okay, let me continue. God's kingdom through governmental authority is worked out by the Spirit in the lives of this man-child company of first fruits. And this is why we find them standing on his mountain in Revelation 14. Their number is 144,000. And the number 12 speaks of the governmental aspect of the kingdom. Praise God. Their identity is not according to the nat natural descent, but according to spiritual worth. And these are counted worthy because they have taken up their cross and followed Christ wherever he leads through laid down lives. Because they have taken up their cross and followed Christ wherever he leads through laid down lives. They shall be as first fruits to God. Luke 9, 57 to 62 says, And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have holes, and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man hath nowhere to lay his head. And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, Suffer me first to go and bury, bury my father. And Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their, their dead. But go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. That doesn't mean you can't be made fit. Jesus is making a point. He's making a point. Yes, you repent for turning away from him. 
if you didn't go completely off the deep end and join up with a satanic cult, and even then I think you can be forgiven. Jesus knows your heart and why you did that to begin with. And maybe you just needed to come to terms with forgiving God for not answering a certain prayer 10 years ago, which is why you fell away and joined a satanic cult. Not you, people. It happens. All right. Now, the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God are not the same realms. Listen to this, y'all. We are all born as babies, first into the kingdom of heaven, outer court realm called paradise. As Jesus declared to the guy on the cross, he was, he was a thief. Uh, he declared to the guy on the cross who was a deathbed conversion. Luke 23, 42. And he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Truly I say to you, today you shall be with me in paradise. The kingdom of God. See, there was a young man several years ago on YouTube. His parent recorded it on a video, put it up. He's maybe 12. I'm, I'm thinking 12. It's been at least five years. He had this very vivid dream. He had gone to heaven. I'm pretty sure it was a dream. I don't think it was a near-death experience. But at any rate, it was very vivid. He saw three cities behind the kingdom. He said one was really nice. Anybody would, would probably like to live there. But they just can't get into the kingdom. And the second city was, it was okay. It was like condominiums. Not as nice, but okay. It was an okay place, you know, kind of like that. I don't remember exactly how he said it. But I'm pretty sure he used the word condominiums. And he said, but the third place was, was like all gray and white. It was just dingy. And I wouldn't want to live there, he said. But that was a city, another city, three cities behind the kingdom of heaven. Okay, so I've all often wondered, and I waited and waited for confirmation. And I had a friend here who died and went up to, quote unquote, heaven. She said, but I never went into the gates. I saw the kingdom, I saw the kingdom of far off and the, and the pearly gates, what she called the pearly gates. She said, but I never got there. I was just in this pasture of beautiful, the most beautiful green grass I've ever seen in my life. More beautiful than anything I've ever seen. With flowers that swayed to the music. And that's exactly how Mary Baxter, I believe is her name. You can find her on YouTube. Her, her uh, When she went to heaven, she talks about the flowers that sway back and forth and sing. And my friend told me about those flowers. Now, she never watched any YouTube videos. She was quite a bit older than me. And this was like 10 years, 9, 8 years ago. Okay, well, she, the Lord brought her back. And, and I'm hoping that she forgave her daughter for marrying a married man. Because that was a really big thorn in her side. She could not, oh, every time we got together, she had to go on. Oh, my daughter needs to get a divorce. She's married to a married man. She's never going to make it into heaven. And it was just a real bitterness there. And she hated the granddaughter. I think she was jealous of her. But then after she died and came back, her daughter dies. And the granddaughter changes and becomes a woman. She had like three or four kids. And the daughter of my friend kept going over to Georgia to help her take care of the kids instead of staying here to take care of my friend. So there was some jealousy and bitterness going on there. And it makes me wonder if she had not come back, if she would have ended up in one of those cities behind heaven. Later she died, but she was so different. After that happened, after her daughter died and her granddaughter started coming here to take care of her, when she could, she would come regularly and she was just so happy. She was a whole different person. And then later, you know, a few months or so later, after she told me all that, I heard, heard she died and she wasn't with us anymore. And I was quite sure she had forgiven 
and she's probably in heaven now, enjoying her mansion. Let me continue. All right. So we're talking about, where was I? All right. The kingdom of God is Mount Zion, which is the realm of the manifested glory, glorified sons and daughters of God who have followed Christ in the way of the cross through laid down lives. They have become his disciples by answering the Philippians 2, Philippians 3, and Hebrews 12, upward call of God in Christ to be conformed to his likeness and image. Which brings me to a point, and it also mentions Romans 8, 28 and 29. Don't let anybody tell you that Paul was a false apostle and the books should not have been in the Bible. Because they tell you to do these things and don't do these things and to live live this way and that's adding to the sacrifice on the cross you know who believes that once saved always saved avoid anybody that talks about paul in a negative way like the plague moving on luke 14 26 to 33 if any man come to me and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren he doesn't literally mean hate we're not supposed to hate he means to love him most. All right. Understand that. And hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brethren and sisters. Yea, and his own life also. He cannot be my disciple. In parentheses, here he used an idiom of preference because it illustrates pure devotion to God and declares that it costs a sacrifice closed parentheses he's referring to the word hate okay just to show you he used that word to show you just how serious he is about you loving him most love the Lord thy God with all thy heart with all thy mind with all thy soul and with all thy strength that's a commandment he gave to us and he means it and whosoever doth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it? Lest haply after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, at that, behold it, begin to mock him. All that, I'm sorry, all that behold it, begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going to make war against another king, sitteth not down first, and consulteth whether he be able with ten thousand to meet him that cometh against him with twenty thousand? I guess he's saying we need to plan things out take things into consideration what are we going to do next if are we going to be able to complete the task what do we need to do to be able to complete the task what do we need how about the baptism of the holy spirit yeah i'm going to keep preaching it go ahead and unsubscribe i don't care i'm telling you the truth so likewise whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath he cannot be my disciple. I want to know how can I forsake all that I have. I've actually thought about selling everything and going homeless. Taking the money I get every month and using it for the homeless. I just, I thought the Lord would give me some kind of confirmation if that's what I was supposed to do. And before I'd gotten delivered of my demons, having seizures left and right, if I didn't get enough sleep or overdid it, my wheelchair, where would I plug in my wheelchair? I would be stuck walking around. That would cause me to overdo it. See, and I got thinking about it and all this. It wasn't the Lord's will or he would have made the way. I would have had a vivid dream about doing it or he would have given me a message to do it. Something 
concrete. Okay. So anyway, I really wondered about all that. You know, what do I got to do to lay down my life? Exactly. All right. Um, so likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsaketh not all that he hath, he cannot be my disciple. It must be understood. Now this is Peter talking. It must be understood that the call to discipleship is not so you might be saved. It's for those who want to become useful servants in the kingdom of God. Who want to receive the crown of the overcomer. Most are just saved into the level of salvation. Into the level of salvation. Yet. They only live for themselves and unto themselves and the call to lay themselves completely down for the sake of Christ offends the majority because the price is too high. Like Christ declared to me, quote, most are offended by the price that love requires. Oh, that's John, John 15. Looks like it says, unless it's supposed to be John 1, 5. But I don't think so, because John 1 is in the beginning, was the Word, and the Word was made flesh. The Word became, later, 1, 14, the Word became flesh. Anyway, yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not 1, 5. It is probably in the book of John, chapter 15. I don't know. This is why we read in Second Peter 1, 3 through 11, According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby we are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance or patience, and to temperance, well, wait a minute, this says, and to temperance, patience and to patience godliness I thought temperance meant maybe temperance is self control let's see and to patience add godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness charity or love so that must be self control temperance for if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. This goes on and on and on oh here's that beautiful picture i'm going to take a picture of it now i read all the way down for november 7th to um a little purple mark so if you want to go to this particular passage and continue reading on it you can or just start at the top and read the most recent. But um, I wanted to uh, read this one because it has in it not just a lot of scripture, which we all need. Let's stay in the word, right? It also has the part about being not everybody's going to make it into the kingdom of heaven, but it doesn't mean they're going to hell, okay? That should bring you hope for some of your loved ones. 
who might have been born again, but they don't repent, or they believe in once saved, always saved. And it could be that if they live right, basically they're living better than many of the rest of us. I know some of my family was that way, but they took the you know what, the venom. Now they are is said in the Word of God in Revelation chapter thirteen and or fourteen. They will go into the lake of fire because their DNA has changed. They're no longer fully human. Their DNA is, is a God-given, created thing with his name in it. Literally. Satan wants to cut that out and add a little horse, a little sheep, a little pig, a little cow, a little bird, a little reptilian from the frog, the luciferase, luciferin, the metal, the nanobots. So you're marked and you have a number and you belong to the deep state, I'm sorry, new world order. So anyway, I'm going to end this video here and say, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over it so it'll go up and stay up. And I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every single one of us, our devices and our internet connections. And I ask that you Keep me in your prayers as I do you in mine. And keep on praying for your lost loved ones that, that are still savable. Because we're coming back. The first fruits are coming back. And we will help them. They will see us in our glorified bodies. They will get healed. Delivered of their demons. Kept them from Christ. Fed clothed and housed if you can just talk them into staying fully human got it i pray that you can all right with that i'm going to say bye for now i'll talk to you later